The semiconductor industry, as we know, has been undergoing a shortage, but it's also been coming out with new products. Uh, Qualcomm, for example, rolling out some new Internet of Things chips just this morning, making that announcement. And I want to bring in Cristiano Aman. He is the president and CEO-elect of Qualcomm. He'll become CEO at the end of this month. Cristiano, it is great to see you. Um, you guys have been expanding your offerings. I should mention Dan Halley is here as well. There he is. He covers tech closely for us. Um, you guys have been expanding your Internet of Things offerings. You know, 5G is really your bread and butter, handsets, but IoT is a growing part of your business. By my read, it was about an eighth of your revenues last quarter. What is the, the goal for that business as you come out with new products and as you look to further growth? Look, we're very excited about the moment in time uh, for the company right now. There's demand for Qualcomm technologies across many other industries. And with that, we've been diversifying the company. What IoT does for the company is significantly expands our addressable market. You know, we, we Aue has been a company focused in mobile, and we're doing well there. We're just the first inning of the 5G game. and But we have this great opportunity, uh, and it's showing our revenues, to use our technology in all of the other industries. Uh, not only a story about 5G, creating demand uh, beyond mobile, but also the broader digital transformation, Qualcomm is one of the beneficiaries. And an example of that is how it's changing the company. Today, we announced not one, but seven IoT platforms. There's now a total of eight just announced in the past couple of weeks. And if you think the nature of the company, we used to count our customers in our both hands. Now we have over 13,000 customers uh, that we're dealing as part of this expansion in the IoT space. Very excited about it. We broke a billion uh, in 1.1 uh, billion in uh, in the quarter. We guided 1.3 in over 70 percent year-over-year growth, and that's a great story for Qualcomm. Hey, Cristiano, it's Dan. Uh, I, uh, good to talk to you again. I, I want to ask uh, about uh, Qualcomm and Apple. Obviously, right now, the, the iPhone 12 has Qualcomm's 5G chip, but there's rumors that they're working on their own. I guess, is there going to be a, an issue going back and forth with them? Uh, and is there uh, any uh, talk between the two companies uh, about future devices? Nice to see you too, Dan. So here's the, here's the you know, on a serious note. Look, we, we have a relationship with Apple. We are just at the very beginning. We said that we have a multi-year agreement and we just launched the first iPhone. We were just the beginning of the relationship. We have some ways to go. Um, it's, it's no secret. I think the company has, uh, you know, Apple has, uh, you know, thinking about working on their own modem. I think the industry has been talking about it. It's not unique to Apple. Um, I will say our partnership with Samsung is one that they always had their own modem, all the way back to CDMA. You know, at some point they had their own modem. And we have a very stable relationship with Samsung. And I will argue in the 5G era, our relationship is expanding. At the end of the day, we are going to be a company that are going to be focusing on defining uh, you know, the pace of the cellular industry. And we're going to be working to have the best modem. That's what we do for a living. That's our one of the number one core competence of Qualcomm. And as long as technology continues to innovate in, in, in cellular and continues, the roadmap continues to move forward, there's always going to be a room for a Qualcomm modem. Having said that, the most important thing right now in our mobile strategy is the opportunity with premium Android. We have one of the largest opportunity, which is at the expense of the changes that happen in the marketplace with high silicon. And what happened is you don't see in the mobile industry then, and all of a sudden the mobile industry, which is mature and is growing a single digit, an opportunity to expand the SAM like we're seeing right now. The Huawei and the high silicon changes the marketplace create an incredible opportunity for Qualcomm to grow. The winners of the Huawei addressable markets kind of defined it, companies like Vivo, Oppo, Xiaomi. And just the premium tier alone within the segment is bigger than the Apple business we have today. And we're really focused on that in the mobile strategy and very excited about this opportunity. So as you guys look to grow, and we know there's a lot of demand out there, there's been a lot of talk about that. Um, are you rethinking your sort of 
fab chain, your supply chain at all. I know you guys partner with TSMC, with Samsung. There's this push, of course, on the part of the U.S. administration to bring some of that semiconductor uh, capacity to the U.S. Now, you guys don't make your chips yourselves, but I'm just curious your thoughts on that and whether any of your partners are bringing some of that production to the U.S. Great question, Julie. Look, in the, the simple answer to your question is we're working with everybody. Um, we, we're fortunate to have this scale to be able to multi-source even at the leading node. So we're working on the leading node with both Samsung and TSMC. We're working with Global Foundries. We're working with MIC. We're working uh, with pretty much every foundry. I think the current supply chain situation, there's uh, there's more demand and supply for all of our products. So there's not a, it's not about one product or another, I think in this current semiconductor uh, you know, supply chain crisis. We're very happy that uh, we see now uh, uh, an opportunity to get those things, the majority of it behind us at the end of this calendar year. Part of it is because, as you said, it, the, our ability to work across multiple foundries. And on your last comment, I, look, we're super excited about uh, more companies investing in manufacturing of semiconductor, including onshore manufacturing semiconductors. Like we've been public about it. We're very happy that Intel uh, wants to be a founder. We're happy to cooperate and partner with them as well. And at the end of the day, the United States built an incredible, fabulous semiconductor industry. That fabulous industry requires manufacturing. Cristiano, I want to ask you, you know, you're the CEO elect at this point. What are you going to do when you transition into the role of CEO? Obviously, it's it's a big change taking over such a large company. So I guess what are you doing to prepare and what kind of changes do you see coming? Look, this uh, this succession at Qualcomm is uh, what I will say probably a uh, uh, you know a plan succession. You know, as being the president since 2018, I've been uh, you know putting together you know our 5G acceleration strategy, our diversification strategy, and as I as become CEO on July 1st, what you're going to see uh, from Qualcomm is number one, we're going to be very focused and executing on the 5G opportunity ahead of us. We're just at the beginning of that. Just on just as a comparison, we expect to get about half a billion uh, 5G users within 2021. There's over 435 operators now in across 133 countries investing in 5G, and we're just at the beginning of that cycle. But the other thing you're going to see about Qualcomm is what we talked about earlier. It's different. There's now demand for Qualcomm technologies across every industry. And when we talk broadly about the transition to the cloud and the digital transformation, we were one of the beneficiaries of that. If you look of the valuation of the cloud companies today, it is based on the premise that a lot of the data and computation is going to move to the cloud. We are the company on the other side connecting everything to the cloud. And that is how Qualcomm is going to be perceived. We're going to be enabling the intelligent edge of, of everything that is connected to the cloud. That's a very large expansion of our addressable market. And it's going to drive a lot of growth in the company in, in the, several, the next several years. Christiane, I, I imagine one thing on your plate is uh, the return to the office for employees, <clears throat> excuse me. And you know, a lot of big te big tech have, have spoken out recently saying they want their employees back in the office the majority of the time. What's your view? Do you see Qualcomm employees spending most of their time back in your headquarters and other offices? Very good. Actually, because you asked this question, there's another thing I want to tell you after I answer. But I'll say uh, we, we're now starting. In, the reality is not the same in all locations. We're a global company. I think we're very fortunate. Things are improving uh, significantly uh, in the United States and uh, in, in San Diego, where our headquarters is. And we have a phase approach to bring employees back to the workplace. We're now on phase one. We expect there's going to be some flexibility at the way we're we're approaching those things as there's a lot of good things about uh, you know being connected uh, with the company that we learned during the pandemic. I think we're going to keep what is good, and uh, and we're going to go back to also what's good of being in the workplace. Of course, 
it's not the same situation everywhere. For example, India, you know, is still in a tough situation there. But uh, as I answer this question, there's one important thing that I have to talk about as we think about coming back to the workplace. One thing that we saw during the pandemic there was an incredible demand for broadband at the home. There was the enterprise transformation at the home, people upgrading their Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi 6, uh, 5G broadband. Now, as employees are slowly getting back to the workplace, what we're seeing is the broadband infrastructure in the workplace was not prepared to do the video calls in a lot of the new use cases. So we're seeing another wave now coming of broadband upgrades in the workplace. And it started to, to reflect in the networking part of our IoT business. We call it the second wave of uh, broadband upgrades as everybody gets back to the workplace and you need a completely different new technology for the new reality of work. Cristiano, that's really interesting um, to think about as well. There's always so much to talk to you about. We hope to talk with you again soon. Thanks for putting a tie on for us as well here this morning, Cristiano Aman. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you again soon. The CEO elect, we'll talk to him when he's in the CEO seat and Dan Howley as well.